Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plants. Me again, Mark. Today we're back at the greenhouse with another video, and for this one, we're gonna be talking about sedum hybrids that I wanted to highlight to you. Some of these are true sedum, and some of these are hybrids, but these are varieties that are kind of on the more awkward and on the more newer side. So some of these sedums you might not have seen before, or probably you could you would already have seen them because I featured them on our videos recently, but I haven't featured them a lot. So now I will be I will be spotlighting these cute adorable sedums that I have here. But before we continue on to the video, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to Kubling Hardin, to Mom Adayalin because uh, because she gave us a very nice gift, and I will be unboxing that later on in the video. So please watch until the end so that you can see what package we have received from Mom Adayalin. But yeah, her Facebook page is Kubling Hardin, so you can check out their page. I will probably be uh, posting a picture of a screenshot of their page here on the side on the screen. So now let's just dive into it and start with our first sedum that I will be featuring. And this is that sedum. This is sedum dendroidium, okay? Some other people here in the Philippines are selling this as a type of jade, mini jade, type of a dwarf jade because it kind of looks like a jade plant. But this is actually a sedum and you can see here it has these nice red edges and it also has flat leaves. So I will also be featuring another sedum that has flat leaves but you can probably tell that it's very unusual for a sedum to have those. But actually a lot of other sedums, especially ones that are not that uh, very succulent because there are sedums that are not very succulent, they will actually also have flat leaves and those sedums are grown for their flowers but this one is still grown for its leaves because uh, it has that nice rosette appearance and it has that nice clumping habit that you can also get a bonsai style look on this sedum and you might be able to fool other people into thinking that this is a jade or this is a crassula but this is not a crassula this is a sedum and that is our sedum dendroidium or yeah i think that's it Probably some other people also have the sedum preltum. Okay, so I'm not sure if that is a different uh, type. I think they are kind of similar in look. So that is the dendroidium and the preltum. Okay, so we have that. So on to the next sedum that I wanted to highlight, we have this variegated sedum choice to look. Okay, this is another miniature style sedum you can see there. Okay, it's not a very large growing sedum it is a clamping type and it's it also comes in a variegated version now there is also a non-variegated version of this that is just plain green but you can see the nice colors on the variegated one you can see all the variations it has with the white edges and then the green inside of the leaves and it kind of looks like it has some pink to it as well so i think that's a really nice unique small size sedum you can also grow this as a bonsai if you want to and also there is some purple on the stems of the plant that kind of makes you think of a portulacaria really but it's a sedum another one of those unusual varieties okay so we have that now on to the next um, these are sedums that I've shown before really this one is another unusual sedum hybrid this is our cremnosedum um, little gem or little jewel if I'm not mistaken okay but look at how much clump this plant already has produced for me okay you can see it's gotten really large it's kind of uh, empty at the other side because i'm still letting it grow but what happened with this one really is um, it was actually planted in a small shallow pot and it was full in that but i had to separate the plant because i have to put it up in a um, hanging pot so i had to separate it which is why the other side is looking empty but this used to be full and now because it has a really nice clumping habit i'm i will just expect it to produce rosettes on this side and we will get a full plant yet again but you can enjoy it on this side and we have some weed okay growing there but yeah that is our cremnosedum little gem it has this nice little rosettes that are really really adorable now my plant just has some mini bugs problem because i have neglected it i have left it dry and this is one plant that you won't want to leave dry for a very long time because it has these tiny leaves and if you leave it dry for a very long time it will dry up very quickly and also it will attract 
mealybugs because um, it's not healthy. If a plant is not healthy, it will be much more um, easier for the mealybugs to attack that plant and also it will get infestations much quicker. So I added um, our Starkle G insecticide on this one and also I've been keeping a close eye on this because it's also flowering which is why it's attracting these mealybugs. Okay. So you just have to be mindful with the care of this plant especially the smaller type, uh, smaller leaf type sedum and sedum hybrids. They are very delicate, so you just want to keep your close eye on them. Um, if you are watering your other succulents, your other thick leaf succulents for about once a week, you might have to water this more frequently, okay? Especially now that we're getting into the hotter season. But yeah, you can still check if it's dry, if you check on its potting mix, and if you check the bottom leaves, if it's wrinkling already. So we have that our adorable little sedum okay just has some mealy bugs on it okay so on to the next uh, plant that i want to highlight we have here our um, cremno sedum okay and also i yeah i'm checking for mealy bugs because this used to have mealy bugs as well but yeah this is another of those um cremno sedum hybrids if i'm not mistaken it has this nice texture to the leaves that you won't be able to see right away but if you touch the plant there is some texture on them kind of like it has this little little tiny fuzz and it also is a clumping type of sedum you can see there okay so i'm not sure if this is a sedum crocodile or sedum alligator but it's named like that because of the probably because of the texture of the leaves we have there and you can see here it, it also has a nice rosette appearance okay if you look at it up top but it also has these nice thick leaves that are not very long they are rounder in shape compared with your other um, more common sedums which have these long leaves but this one has much more stout much more compact growth okay so we have that now on to the next and we're now going into the more unusual ones or the more newer sedums that i have and one of them is this it's just too big to bring to the camera yeah but we have that this is sedum alantoides and it's sedum alantoides goldii if i'm not mistaken okay and this has a smaller uh, this has a different version which has rounder leaves but this one the goldie version has these flat leaves and you can see here that it has these nice flat leaves and it also has this blue color to it that you wouldn't usually find you with your other sedums because it's bluer in color but yeah it's really really interesting this has been going in my rain or shine location and i haven't been caring for this too much but you can see it held up quite nicely it doesn't have a lot of problems okay we have we still have this large thick stems on it okay really really nice and we have those nice flat leaves that has thick farina and it's really really adorable okay really really unique for a sedum to have that really really nice interesting uh, sedum it's just very heavy that i wanted to put it down but yeah you can see look at that and uh, what you can do with this one if you're not putting it in a rain or shine location you can pretty much notice the leaves getting wrinkly if they haven't been watered for a while but if you consistently water it um, it will still grow but it's one of those slower growing sedums it's not a very fast growing sedum so you have to be patient with it and because of that because it's not a very fast grower you can enjoy it for a long time without having to worry about it getting gangly or getting all over your place because it's not that fast grower okay you can see all the new growth that it has on this uh, tips here okay those are new leaves but these older ones that's what they had that's what the plant had when it first came and it, ha it hasn't branched out a lot okay it's just a very slow growing sedum okay so on to our next sedum we have this um sedum oh no i think i forgot the name but it's one of those that are very hard to pronounce okay um furfuracium okay that's the name i remembered it's sedum furfuracium it's one of those uncommon sedums as well and you can see here how different it is compared with your other sedums look at those fat leaves that have textures that produce these like white white colors on it 
really really unique for a sedum okay i haven't seen that uh, with other sedums probably with the hernandez ci only but this is one of those more uncommon type sedums really 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 unique and yeah it's um pretty much it doesn't give me a lot of trouble probably haven't given me trouble yet but you can see there are some leaf drying up at the bottom so I know that it's already rooting up because it has drying leaves at the bottom and the dried leaves doesn't look really nice, okay? It doesn't look like your common succulents when they dry their leaves and their leaves in itself doesn't look like any other succulent, I think. Um, yeah, it has that really unique texture to it and it's actually natural to the plant. It's not something that is brought by chemical, okay? That's just how the plant grows its leaves. It has this nice little texture and also has some whitish powdery stuff on it yeah that you wouldn't find on your other sedums it's really unique i don't know how to explain it the stems also are very different with your other sedums it has these nice textured stems that are really really unique they look like they're woody so yeah really uncommon sedum we have there sedum for Phrasium. i don't know if that is a hybrid probably that is a unique species okay on to the next, we have our Sedum Hernandez CI. And this one is also another new Sedum that I have and it's also very unique. You can see all the fatness of the leaves on there. And the growth of this plant is not uh, in a spiral shape. Okay, it grows more like a stack with leaves on um, forming a plus sign. Okay, that's how it produces its leaves. Now just like with the sedum for Phrasium, it has these textured leaves that has white colors on them, okay? Really, really unique and it's not like a farina. It's like it's, it has this um, thin skin on top of it that covers the leaf and that is really, really unique about this plant. And yeah, it's really, really different, really, really weird compared with your other sedums. And also, this one has fuzzy stems. Okay, I just noticed it right now. But looking at it from afar, you would think that it has a textured stem, but the stem on this one is fuzzy. Okay, it has those fuzzy, fuzzy stems. And really, really unique. Sedum Hernandez CI. Okay. On to our next sedum, we have the Sedum uh, Hintonii. And this is one of the very few fuzzy sedums that you will probably encounter if you are buying succulents. Because we, when we think of fuzzy succulents, we don't automatically go with sedums. Sometimes we look into Echeveria setosa and other types of Echeveria. Now the Cotyledon bear spa also has some fuzziness to it and the Calanchoe tomentosa. So those are very unique uh, fuzzy type succulents. And this sedum is uh, this is a sedum that is a fuzzy one. This is sedum Hintonia. I don't. I think there are also other varieties of sedum which is fuzzy, but this is the one that is most readily available here in our market. And you can see that. This plant of mine has already desiccated a lot of the leaves because it's been rooting up and I have been neglecting it. I haven't been watering it too much because I killed my old Hintonia by overwatering. And right now I'm very careful not to overwater this one. So it's getting a little bit more dry than usual. So you're seeing some desiccation on the sides right there. But this is a really nice, really cute looking sedum if you look at its new growth there are very fat leaves and it has that nice rosette appearance as well and yeah you can touch it because it's a fuzzy type sedum really really unique and really really unusual and i would say that this is a little bit more on the delicate side okay it also has these fuzzy stems but yeah if you look at it and if you touch it it feels like it's gonna break it's not a very sturdy type of sedum compared with your perforation um, this one looks very tough okay you can touch it and the leaves doesn't fall off and the uh, stems are sturdy but this one okay they look like they're flappy look at look at that how it moves okay so it's very very delicate so i'm actually very careful when handling this sedum hintonia okay so we have that really different 
Okay, I I used to think that sedums will have the same like type of stems and same uh, type of leaves that they're just this fat type of succulents, but no, they are very varied, and there are actually some even more um, weirder sedums that I will be showing later on. Okay, so you just wait. Now uh, we're gonna go with our next one. This is our um, Pachycidum ganju. This is a Pachyphytum crossed with the sedum. And I used to have this plant. And what remained of my old Pachycidum ganju is this one. Okay. This is the remains of my old Pachycidum. And this is the new Pachycidum that I have. Okay. And I'm still caring for that small one. Yeah. But this one has already is already grown. I bought this as a large sized plant right away because I want to get more success with this type of um, hybrid and so I bought one that is already large in size and this one produces this purplish color uh, purplish colored new leaves but as they mature they also turn into this like green type of leaf but you can see it's very unique because it doesn't have a rosette shape to its heads okay it just has this like um, wonky type of growth at the middle and it also has this fat long leaves okay very unique for a sedum and for a sedum hybrid but this one produces these leaves because it's crossed with a sedum craigii i will be showing that to you later uh, sedum craigii is not a rosette type of sedum it doesn't produce leaves in a uh, spiral fashion so that is very unique with this type of sedums okay pachycidum ganshu now we're gonna go with a more rosette type of uh, sedums and these ones are the ones that are more marketable probably because of their nice rose-like appearance and which is why they're the ones that are more commonly sold and also they are crossed with um, echeverias some of the plants that I have here so they have this more rose-like appearance because they are hybrids one of those is the sedeveria pudgy okay and what I noticed with uh, sellers of Korean sellers of Sedevera Pudgy, sometimes they will sell this uh, sedum hybrid as a Sedevera Vanilla Bees. Okay, they call it Vanilla Bees, but yeah, it's the same as the Pudgy. And this is the Pudgy that we have. We have this nice dark edges to it and really, really thick leaves. And you can see all the new growth that it has produced. It has that nice clean looking farina okay i'm careful not to overwater this one because i didn't want it to etiolate a lot of sedeverias and se sedum hybrids if you water them consistently and if you don't have enough light they will oftentimes grow straight upwards which is kind of like ugly looking especially for this rosette type of sedeverias and i didn't want this one to etiolate a lot so i have been neglecting it i haven't been watering it too much and you can see the effect on the plant it has much more thicker farina and much more thicker leaves and also it has that kind of a smaller shape because I haven't been watering it a lot but you can see much more growth on your succulents really if you water them plenty and if you give them a lot of sunlight so me um, I'm just probably gonna continuously water it and I'll be moving it to a brighter location so that we don't see any etiolation on this uh, sedeveria pudgy because sedeverias really are these upright growers you can see here this one is already a tree-like sedum and we don't like that look on our sedums. So I have been watering this um, pudgy a little less and you can see it's much more cream in color than blue. Okay, because I've seen, I'm seeing a lot of pudgy and they're um, bluish in color but this one has a much more creamy green look to it. Really, really nice. Okay, on to the next. Um, this is our Sedeveria Lala. And other people, other sellers sell this as Sedeveria um, Cluey, okay, because it's Clavatum crossed with Alawi. And you, you can see the Clavatum influence on there and also the Lawi because it's a rosette type of succulent. It, ha it has this thick farina, but compared with the Lawi, this one is more on the green, vibrant color. And the Lawi has a much more pinkish, orangey tone, okay, under its farina. Okay, I don't know how to um, explain it really, but it's very different. Okay, this is the Lawi and this is the Lala. Okay, Louie. So this one has whiter farina and a nice orangey 
under color to the leaves if you rub off the farina it is orangey but this one is more on the greenish color probably because of the clavatum okay now if you smell this the lala okay it might have a little bit of smell but it's not very noticeable compared with your sedum clavatum very very mild but there is some hint to it okay it it, it has just a little bit of that scent but yeah, it's much more prominent on the uh, clavatum, not on the lala. But you can see it's really, really nice. And I will just wait for this one to grow a little more. But I don't expect it to get as wide as the lawi because it's a sedum hybrid. So it will just probably stay compact and produce clumps as it matures. Okay, so we have that. And this is a Korean one when I bought it. But I think there is some... Um, local propagators of Sedevera lala, it's just not that very common, okay? Because it's a rare type of succulent, really. The next rare succulent that we have, but um, this one is much more readily available, really. This is our meal, okay? And this is a sedum crossed with a grapto petalum, and I just noticed it. I don't feature a lot of grapto sedum on this video okay this is the only graptosidum that i will be featuring right now and this one has that similar uh, look to a sedum hybrid okay really really nice but this one is very very fat look at this look at the new growth that it has and the new clean farina that is produced okay it just has some smudges to it because i've been touching it but i've been avoiding touching it really and also this has produced a lot of babies right now okay look at that look at all the new babies it has because it's crossed with the grapto petalum it's much more readily uh, actively growing and much produces more pups readily okay it's not a very slow growing type of uh, succulent and if you want this really fat type of uh, succulents that has a lot of farina this one I would recommend highly for you because compared with your other fat type succulents like the amethystino which grows much more slowly this one grows a little more quick okay I have seen a lot of new growth on this one it's also very very fat which is why I'm careful not to overwater this succulent but probably once it grows a little more I will transfer it to a bigger container okay but yeah it's a really really nice plant and I think that this can also get a lot more fatter than this okay this is not the fattest it can go I think it can get more chubbier than that yeah but that's really really nice our grab to see them meal okay now on to the final one and this is the last sedum, but I have shown this before. I just wanted to highlight it again because, yeah, this is one of my more favorite um, uncommon type of sedums that is very, very unique and not very common. Okay, this is sedum craigii. You can see the original head that it has and the new pops that it has already produced. Okay, we look at the new pops that it has. Really, really nice. Okay, and you can see the influence it has given i just realized it's a really difficult uh, setup okay there are actually plants here you can see it but there are plants here all over the place but you can see the influence okay you can see the similarity the quagii is a true sedum it's not a pachyphytum and also the ganchu is a pachy pachycedum hybrid okay and you can see it doesn't have rosettes on it okay and this one also it's not a rosette type succulent okay it's not a very rosette looking one but they're still very adorable all the same even though they are not rosettes okay look at that but they're very adorable and they also have that nice uh, thick farina and what i noticed with the quagii as i um, continuously grow it and as i'm neglecting it a little for a little while it has that nice purplish look to it as well very very unique for a sedum okay to have a purplish look okay which is why i adore it so much it has a bluish purplish look really really nice and you can see all the new growth it has i just want to keep showing this plant because i really like it but still i would say that this is not the fastest sedum this is one of the more slower growing sedums out there which is why you won't find it usually being sold here in the philippines because they're not that fast of a grower and really what I find with these um, highland propagators, a lot of them will be selling, will be producing more succulents that are easy to propagate. So sometimes if, if a succulent is not that easy to grow, they will not grow it, they will not sell it. 
especially if these succulents are not the more um, you know not the more popular ones because of their weird wonky appearance so they're not that popular and also they're very slow growing so you won't find these sedums very easily here in the market in the Philippines but if you find one okay um, I really recommend that you try these slow growing sedums as well okay some of the sedums that I have shown here okay I will be posting the sellers on the side where I got them from so that you have an idea of where to buy them if you really want to try them out okay so I think that's about it for our sedum uh, highlight spotlight video um, we're gonna do our unboxing right now because you have patiently waited for me as I rant so now I'm gonna be moving the plants and then I'll be bringing up the box that we have okay okay it's getting really really noisy right now and I'm standing because this is very big and I think that okay I think I should have placed this on the table because it's very very big and I think that there are a lot of things in here so this came from again from Kubling Hardin on Facebook you can check them out and this is their products and they wanted to uh, share it with us and I'm really really happy because they decided to give us some to Mam Adaya Lin because she's the one who chose me and she's um, from a nearby province here or not province, Kabanatuan is a city so she's from Kabanatuan and from Dingalan we're very close and close in the uh, place and yeah she was very very generous to have given us these spots okay and I'm very very thankful oh I said it already <laughs> you're not supposed to know <laughs> I said it already these are pots okay she asked me what color I would like and I said I want to have these plain ones because um, I think it matches with the succulent, makes the succulent stand out even more if the pot is not that colored or if the color is in there, I would recommend it some more pastel color. But for this one, as I think I want to go with the clay one, clay color. And this is really, really nice because I have some succulents that needs to be repotted on bigger containers. Look at that really nice shape to it it's not looking like those pots that um, the clay containers that is used for feeding chickens because there is there are clay containers here in the Philippines that are used for feeding chickens and it doesn't look like that this one really suits succulents look at that look at that really really nice okay I'm just gonna put it down so this is a different looking one it's not uh, it, it has, doesn't have the shape as the other one but you can see yeah, look at that really really nice and I think that this would really suit well for those small plumping type of succulents like we have featured recently and yeah I think I want to put this in a rain or shine location as well because it will drain very fastly so um, if it gets rain then it will dry up very quickly and also because it's very tough it won't topple over because a lot of my rain or shine, rain or shine succulents out there easily topples over when they get bumped by other people okay and then people will tell me that it got bumped by the wind because the strong wind blew it away but it's them actually who bumped it so this will hopefully avoid that problem okay so we have that but yeah that's just what happens with growing succulents sometimes accidents happen okay so here they are really really large okay it takes up the space so much okay so i'm i have two of these okay this is a very uh very plain type of shape okay it's really really thick so i know that this won't break easily and we have two of these flat ones i think i could try making a arrangement making an arrangement on this one because it's a flat one also with this one it is a flat wavy type pot okay really really nice we can put some arrangement on that probably someday okay and we have these three smaller still shallow pots and i really really like the shallow aspect to that because succulents don't have very deep roots so these shallow types are really really good for them 
shallow pots because they won't really produce a lot of fruits and they won't be reaching down very deep so a shallow pot is very very ideal for them and yeah i'm gonna be looking for a spot to place this okay but you can see here we have already have those big size succulents probably i will put them on one of those spots so yeah, I think that's about it for this video and I really hope that you like the succulents that I've shown you and the unboxing that we made. Yeah, really, really uh, big thanks to Ma'am Adayalin and to Kubling Hardin for sending these pots. Yes, really, really happy for that. And yeah, I think that's about it. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.